Okay, Craig, what are we looking at here? Well, that's the home exploring robot butler, also known as Herb. Nice. That wasn't very gentle, but that was... So my first question is for Herb. Hey, Herb, how are you today? Oh, no. Very funny, Craig. <laughs> so what, what's this Herb guy all about? Well, Herb can do various tasks, like open a fridge door, microwave a meal, remove books from a bookshelf, or clear a table of dishes. I was way better at it, though. Yes! But the thing that makes Herb truly amazing is that, like me, he's doing everything autonomously. The movements themselves are not being joysticked or anything. Don't you think that's amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. He's a pretty cool guy. Herb recognizes each dish based on the tags and then runs some planners on his own to decide how to best pick them up and put them in the tray. Hey. Hooray! Boom. It seems that Herb is as close as we've come to a true robot maid, a la Rosie from the Jetsons. Good evening, Mr. J. He can see objects and decide, albeit on a very limited scale, how to pick them up and move them on his own. Well, I got a lot of chores to do. How long before I get a robot maid? I'll be honest, I think we're a long way off from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, come on, I've got some laundry to do. Hang on, I've been hearing things about how technology is growing at an exponential rate. Oh? Tell me more. There's, there's this thing called Moore's Law, and Moore is one of the founders of Intel. I think he said that every two years, the computing ability of the best computer that is available doubles. That's right, Matt. In 1965, Gordon E. Moore postulated that the... That the oh, wait, 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 yeah, I know this one. Actually, he modified his original 1965 statement in 1975 and said that the number of transistors in a dense integrated circuit doubles approximately every two years. Yes, this does seem to have panned out. This could be partly because semiconductor companies have used Moore's Law for long-term planning, so it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. Still, it's pretty accurate. I feel a butt coming on. However. Okay, maybe it wasn't however. I get those feelings mixed up. But Moore himself have said that that's not actually inevitably the case because at some point we would have stretched the very material with which we use the computer chips to its limit. Okay, so if Moore's law no longer holds up, then the growth of technology and the speed of computers will stop accelerating, right? Unless we come out with something, some new radically different computing uh, you know, technology, um, like quantum chips. Yeah, quantum chips starring Scott Bakula and Eric Estrada coming no, in the fall. No, quantum chips are something else. Basically, when transistors get very, very small, weird things happen and we have to bring quantum physics into the mix. The point is that if Moore's law or some other new technology allows computers to get more and more powerful, then based on the current trend, some people have predicted that by about 2040 or oh, around, around that time, the best computers will have reached the complexity of the human brain. Wait, who predicted that? I didn't predict that. I know. It's actually an average of a bunch of predictions. Author Werner Vinge predicted sometime before 2030, and Ray Kurzweil predicted 2045. Ah, uh, the guy who talks about the singularity. I knew we'd eventually get to that. Uh, so does that mean in 2040, that's when the singularity is going to happen? Well, I don't know about that. Maybe we should describe what the singularity is. The singularity is an event that's theorized to happen when artificial intelligence surpasses our understanding and control. The machines we create will be smarter than us, they'll be able to replicate themselves, and everything after this event will be totally unpredictable and unfathomable, leading some people to assume that this will inevitably result in machines rising up and destroying us. Ah! One thing I don't understand is why does computer technology have to increase exponentially? That seems kind of speculative. Well, according to Ray Kurzweil, Moore's Law is actually part of a larger trend that he calls the Law of Accelerating Returns, which basically means that all technology will always advance exponentially. This has been going on ever since humans have been inventing simple tools, and if you think about it, it's been happening long before that with biological evolution. It all began around 3.6 billion years ago when the first signs of life on our planet emerged as single-celled organisms. And for a long, long time, that was the only life around. It took about two and a half billion years of evolution for the first multicellular organisms to finally show up, and another half billion years for the first fish and vertebrates to evolve. 200 million years later is when you start to see the first reptiles. Now, 200 million years is quite a long time, but as you can see, things are picking up the pace a little bit. 100 million years ago, you get mammals, then great apes, and finally, around 250,000 years ago is when we start to see the first anatomically modern humans. And once human beings were introduced to this planet, it appears that the next stage in evolution was technology, although that was slow to start at first, too. Even though humans had been around for a while, it wasn't until the fourth millennium BC that we invented the wheel. Back then, major innovations took thousands of years to happen. The abacus was invented during the 3rd millennium BC, and then it was another thousand years or so before the first written alphabets emerged. 
Eventually, though, major technological breakthroughs started occurring every hundred years or so, like gunpowder, paper money, and the compass. Things really start picking up around the 18th century with inventions like the steam engine, cotton gin, and vaccinations. And by the time the Industrial Revolution was in full swing, major innovations started popping up left and right. You got photography, oil refining, industrial steelmaking, the automobile, telephone, etc. And now we're in the 20th century and things are happening even faster. Air conditioning, airplanes, radio, Super Mario, TV, rockets, the Thighmaster, Jeff Goldblum, nuclear fission, the internet, and of course, the person computer, where Moore's Law begins. Okay, I see what you're getting at. Moore's Law may not be applicable in a few years, but some new technology will probably emerge that will continue the trend that's been going on since life began. Right, and keep in mind there have been several mass extinction events over the past billion years or so, and that hasn't stopped evolution one bit. I guess not. I haven't been keeping track, really. Now, most of the technological evolution that happens these days comes from computer technology, and as you can see from this 2012 chart by Ray Kurzweil, the calculations per second of affordable processors is going up, up, up at a predictable rate. Looks like right now computers should be just past the computational equivalent of a mouse brain. But someday computers will have the processing power of the human brain, and the singularity will happen, right? Well, some people seem to think so, but Carnegie Mellon engineers don't seem too worried about it. Maybe it will happen, maybe it won't happen, but I just think that we have so many problems we have to solve that are so intimidating, so daunting, I'm not even ready to begin to think about the singularity. Yeah, sure, singularity, blah, sure. blah, blah. <laughs> I think the mistake is to say, oh, there's one big event. I believe there are lots of little events, and there are lots of screw-ups, and we fix them as we go. Yeah. And when robots coming after you, all you really need is a wet blanket. Uh, water? <laughs> yeah, yeah, water, and if it can't see. This is yeah. waterproof. Though. Yeah, well. Oh, this one's waterproof? It's water resistant. What are you guys doing? Water resistant, You are yeah. creating the singularity. <laughs> uh, some days more than others, I guess. <laughs> so it seems like what they're saying is that the singularity is something that could happen, but we shouldn't be concerned about it and we might not lose control. It seems so, and one possible reason for the hesitancy to entertain the idea of the singularity could be. If you look at the history of artificial intelligence, for years people said, it's right around the corner, we're gonna have these incredible AI systems. They said that in the 70s, and the 80s, and the 90s. And so they were burned by this idea that, wow, we imagine something, we do it in the laboratory, it turns out not to work as well as we thought in the real world. So we're just going to stop prognosticating and put our heads down and do research. Okay, maybe it's silly for an engineer to speculate about the singularity because it's such a long way off. Or maybe it's impossible. Robots need algorithms to make decisions. Algorithms are made by people. Have we ever made algorithms that can make new algorithms? I did once. Oh wait, that was a hot pocket. Maybe there's something about the imperfect nature of nature that can't be replicated artificially. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, so let's just say it is going to happen for fun. Who doesn't love a robot apocalypse? Let's say robots get smarter, and they replicate themselves, and they're out of our control. What will happen? Now I have to say that there's no less than three competing uh, ideas about the future of humankind in the age of robots and artificial intelligence and so on. Maybe the oldest idea, he says, began with Samuel Butler, who in 1863 wrote an article called Darwin Among the Machines. As far as I can tell, he was the first one to actually outright say that one day, these machines are gonna turn against us. No! And that scenario is played over and over again in our own time in movies like Terminator and Matrix and so on. Whoa. Spoiler, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> in the article, Samuel Butler says that the time will come when the machines will hold the real supremacy over the world and its inhabitants is what no person of a truly philosophic mind can for a moment question. Well, let's question it. Okay. Uh, the second theory is the idea that there will be a way we could coexist. This obsession with power and winning and all that, maybe that's in encoded in our biological nature. You know, because we uh, came about as a result of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. It was all about struggle and survival, but robots may not have that. In, in fact, they, they may turn out to be morally superior. They may be the ones who poke us out of going to war by pointing out how irrational that is. Actually, that sounds like a future I could get behind. Yeah, I'm into it. Okay, so first scenario, robots replace or enslave humanity. Second scenario, robots become our morally superior sexy nannies. No, they don't have to be sexy. Uh, are you sure? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they do. No. It's one of the laws of sexy robotics, I read it. No, okay, so third scenario. There's not gonna be a war, um, but not quite like coexistence either. The idea is that there's gonna be a cybernetic emergence. At some point, the difference between that which is artificial and that which is natural will, will just blur to uh, non-existence. He's more machine now than man. You know, this isn't that recent. I think about 10 years ago, they managed to um, link directly a monkey's brain 
to a robotic arm. And he could move the robotic arm just by his thought. That's amazing. I mean, I, as I said, I, I didn't think we were anywhere near this. We've actually gone a lot further than that. At the University of Pittsburgh, researchers implanted sensors in Jan Schuerman's brain, allowing her to move her robotic arm with her mind brain. And just last year, Les Ba became the first bilateral shoulder level amputee to wear and control two prosthetic limbs with his thoughts at the same time. It's happening! Yeah, it seems like a great thing. Technology helping people. I feel a however coming on. Conversely, if we merge with machines... We will become radically different from what we are now. At what point does that person stop, see, uh, you know, stop being a human and be something else, right? So either robots take over and destroy us, or robots take over and coexist with us as our morally superior besties, or we become robots. Or a combination of them. Or none of them. Or it's already happening. What? Think about it. Hardly anyone knows all the aspects of how a computer works, or any technology for that matter. Do you know how that camera works? And if we brought somebody from the 17th century to today, everything around them would look crazy. They wouldn't be able to understand it. It'd be like a singularity had already happened. Yeah, but that's, come on. People are in control of technology. Well, are they really, control. Though? It doesn't make any no. sense. You know, like, is there an entity? Is there a government? But it doesn't mean that it's not, control. it's out of our, so it, that it is completely out of our, that we're in control of yeah, our control. Yeah, things go a little haywire, but we can always turn them off. We? It's I'm not, not like they're going to replicate and, and, because there's so you know, just factors, go off and so have their own little robot fairyland. Because there's so much technology involved in our world today, there's no way we could stop it. It'd have to take all of us together working in unison, and it has never happened in the history of humankind. You know what? Let's just stop speculating. I think we're done. Nope. I, yeah, we're done. Fine. So we're just going to stop prognosticating and put our heads down and do research. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, you can click like. You won't start a singularity or anything. You can subscribe. There's a button right up there for it. And you can support the show on our Patreon page. Up next, we're talking about how we might be becoming robots. And it's not a good thing. It doesn't mean the singularity, though. Yeah, it does. Nope. It's happening. Nope. Uh -huh. Or maybe it is. You should you should make robot uh, like light lights in my eyes, Ryan, when you edit this. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>